Hey guys, this is Sky Vault, and welcome to the next episode in this Raylib tutorial series. So today I'm going to be covering input. Um, so input is one of the most important things to a game, you know, input being like keyboard driven input. So if I type a key, how do we handle that? Stuff like that. But also controllers, like uh, Xbox controllers and um, mouse input, uh, getting the location of the mouse coordinates and all that, that's all very important for game development. And thankfully Raylib makes that very easy to do. So first off, let me show you how to uh, get keyboard input. So uh, the, there's a couple functions that help you do that. Um, the, one of the most important ones is is key down, all right? And then you want to check the key. So uh, the key value is just an enum value. So it uh, goes by key underscore and then the key that you want to check. So I'm going to check if the uh, W key is pressed, all right? So let's just do, uh, wrap this in if statement. So if the W key is down, oh, let me uh, do that real quick. So this is uh, caps lock, or it's uppercase. So if the key W is down, let's, uh, oh, first off, let me just talk about this project real quick. So what we're doing is, let me um, run it. We're just drawing our scarfy guy right here that we had in the last episode. And we're using uh, the variable X and Y to position it. So what we can do right here is we can say X plus equals get frame time. And if you remember, get frame time just is the uh, the amount of time it takes to render a single frame. And this is used to make sure that we get consistent timing with each uh, if our frame rate goes pretty low. And we're going to multiply that by 10 because we want it to move a little bit faster than that. So now if I press W, you'll see uh, the character is moving very slowly. Let's actually increase the speed to 100. Alright, there we go. So when I press the key W, and you can see down here I'm pressing the key W. The, uh, the guy will move across the screen. All right, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but that, uh, where is that? That's very useful. What if we want to make it so that it will, um, it will only register once? The key will only register once when we press it. So if I press W, it will only move the character, you know, let's say 32 pixels, and and it won't keep moving it until I let up on the W key and then press it again. Well, there's a function for that, and that's called is key pressed. And instead of 100, I'm going to make this 500, just so we can really see it move. So now, when I press the key, I press it once, you see it moved a little bit, and I'm holding it down, but when I let go and then press it again, it'll move. So it only moves once each time I press it, and it won't keep registering that event. Now, this is actually a really awesome function to have. For, uh, for a lot of reasons, and I usually have to implement this myself when I'm using something like SFML or uh, SDL or something like that, but it's really nice that Raylib just gives it to you, uh, you know, it gives it to you in the standard library. So those are the two important uh, uh, functions for handling key input. Uh, there's also uh, the alternative, so is key up. So now this, uh, let me turn this back to 100. So now uh, this will check if the key is not being pressed down, if it's up, and it'll keep moving basically until I press the W key. Once I press the W key or hold down the W key, uh, it will keep moving or it will stop music moving. And then there's also is key released, which is the opposite of is key pressed, um, which means it'll only fire once when I uh, release the key. All right. Okay, so the last thing I want to mention with keyboard input is where to find what kind of keys you can use. So if you go over to the uh, Raylib's GitHub, or if you just look at the source file you know that's installed on your computer, if you go to Raylib.h and go to line 460, you'll see the enum that has all of the keys that you can actually use. So there's quite a few of them. You know, you have your insert key, your arrow keys, which are very, pretty important. You know. Uh, all the all the keys and all the names and all that and I couldn't find a better place to find all these keys um, it might be on the cheat sheet I'm not I, I can't remember but yeah so that's uh that's uh all the keys okay so next let's talk about uh, mouse input mouse input is very important so to uh, check if the, let's say the left button is pressed or actually to check if any of the uh, mouse button buttons are pressed the function is uh, is mouse button pressed. Alright, and then in here we're going to say mouse button left. I believe that's the value. Uh, mouse left button. Sorry, I got that backwards. Mouse left button. Alright. If it is, I'm going to move our character down like 32 pixels. Alright. 
So now uh, I'm going to click with my mouse in three, two, one, and you see that it moves down. And I can keep clicking. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Just keep clicking, and the character will move down. Um, same thing with the uh, with the keyboard. There's also the is mouse button down function, and this will move down as long as I'm holding it, uh, holding the mouse button down. And if I slow this down, it might be a little easier to see. So if I press and hold, the character's going to move. If I let go, it's going to stop moving. Press and hold, and all that. And there's also is mouse button up and is mouse button released. So if we want to get the actual coordinates of the mouse, um, then uh, the functions that we want to use are uh, are as follows. So we want to say get mouse x to get the x mouse position, and then get mouse y to get the y position. And I'm just going to set the x to the uh, mouse x and the y to the mouse y. Now again, this is going to be in screen, sp or not again, but this is going to be in screen space. So um, that's one thing to keep in mind. You're going to have to project that into world space if you want to actually, you know, uh, handle cameras and stuff like that. But as you can see, the character now tracks the mouse as I move it around. Um, another function that you can use is uh, if you want to get the vector two of where the mouse is. Um, it's a function called get mouse position, and uh, yeah, that will return a vector two. Um, one other thing that's kind of related to mouse is there's also the uh, get touch x function and get touch y function. Um, now I, I can't really test this out because my monitor isn't a touch screen monitor, but if you are building an app for Android, you can actually get the touch location um, and all that. And you get to, I, it doesn't look like you, oh yeah, you can. You can actually um, get the certain location for which finger you know, you're, you're actually pressed and all that. But that's outside the scope of this video. We might cover mobile application development with Raylib, but, but yeah, maybe later. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about today is controller support. So I have right here an Xbox One controller, um, and this is just supported. I, uh, I'm sure PlayStation, uh, PlayStation controllers are supported and all that. Um, any any controller that implements, I think the X controller, whatever that uh, that you know Linux or Windows has, you know anything that has those drivers, uh, should work with Raylib um, and very well too. Now Raylib uses, I believe it uses the Xbox. Let me let me double check this again. It uses Xbox, um, you know, like naming conventions for the buttons and stuff. So actually, no, no, they're actually. I'm, I'm looking at the source file, and again, you can have a reference to the source to the source file yourself. But it actually has a um, loadout for PlayStation buttons. It's uh, titled Gamepad PS3 Button, and that's the that's the name of the enum. So you can actually map this to. Um, you can get the name of the gamepad and actually tell which gamepad you're using, and you know, in your code. Uh, use those names and all that, but uh, but yeah. I, since I have an Xbox controller, I'm going to be using the Xbox um, naming conventions for all for every all the buttons and all that. So the first function that we want to check is if the if we actually have a uh, controller plugged in. So the function is uh, wait. Let me scroll back up to uh, okay. The function is is game pad available. All right. And now what this is going to return. And um, with this, actually, okay, we also need to um, t uh, say which gamepad we're looking for. And if, uh, the gamepads, there, uh, there's uh, four gamepads available that you can actually use. I think you can have more, but um, you're, you're not going to be able to use the enum. I believe you can use more, but I don't know why you would have more than four. But anyway, uh, so we want to check the player one, so the first gamepad that's connected. So if the gamepad is detected, I'm just gonna print "Hello Gamepad." Uh, uh, yeah, "Hello Gamepad," and then um, I'm also gonna do uh, "Get Gamepad Name," and um, this should actually no, I'm not gonna do that because I have to I have to create a string and all that. And I'm not gonna bo be bothered to do that right now. But you can also get the game the name of the gamepad. But for now, um, I'm just going to say hello gamepad. If I run this, um, actually, let me run this in the terminal just to make it a little bit more clear. Uh, let me make sure everything's built. All right, so uh, you can see that spamming hello gamepad. And if I re uh, let go, if I take out the cord, um, it's not saying hello gamepad anymore. And if I plug it in, it will register. And as you can see, the number's getting bigger, meaning we're getting more. Uh, Hello Gamepad's printed to you standard out. So that's very cool. And that's really easy, and that's a good way to detect if you have a gamepad 
connected and you can use that to turn off maybe keyboard controls or whatever you want to do. So once you know that you have a, uh, a gamepad, uh, you can actually say, um, you can actually get certain keys. So I'm going to check if the A button on the controller is pressed. So I'm going to say, is gamepad button pressed? Now I need to type in the gamepad number. So I'm going to check for player one. And then I'm going to check gamepad, uh, I'm going to do Xbox. Let me uh, get a reference of the button name, uh, Xbox. Uh, button A. So this is going to check if the A button right here is being pressed. If it is, then I'm going to just move the character's X position by three pixels or so. Alright, so let's run this and once I click the A button, you'll see that uh, once I press it, uh, it will move the character uh, three pixels to the right. So I'm going to now, uh, there's also the uh, is gamepad button uh, down function. And this works exactly like the keyboard, so as long as I'm pressing the button down, it will register that. Um, and then there's also the released and up, you know. So uh, that is if we want to get the gamepad, um, check the gamepad button, uh, the buttons of the gamepad. And you can do this with the arrow keys, or uh, with the, not the arrow keys, but the uh, D-pad and all that. Um, now joystick uh, is a little bit more complicated, well, it's, it's not really more complicated, but, um, but yeah, if you want to get the actual, like, uh, position of a joystick, you know, the, the coordinates and all that, then what you do is you call the function. So I'm going to say um, left x, left pad, or left um, joystick uh, x. I'm going to say is equal to get game pad axis movement. And actually this returns a float between 0 and 1. 1 being all the way over, uh, 0 being not over at all. Um, and then I'm going to check for gamepad uh, player one, and then I'm going to do the zeroth axis, which I which I believe is the actually I can do gamepad Xbox axis uh, left X. So I'm going to check the X axis, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, I'm going to say X plus equals a certain value. So let's say uh, get frame time times let's say 100 and then multiply that by left joystick axis. So if the uh, joystick isn't moved at all in the x direction, then it's going to be zero, and our character's not going to move at all. But the more we move it towards the edge, it's going to slowly ramp up to one, and then the character will be moving at full speed. So if I run this, uh, the character's going to be, it might be moving a little bit because uh, remember that um, the, uh, the, the stick might not be completely centered when it's uh, in the middle. You know, that's just how joysticks work. But if I, uh, move the joystick all the way to the left or all the way to the right, you can see our character is actually moving in that direction. And of course we can do the same thing with the y-axis. So I'm going to change this to the y-axis and I'm going to rename these variables right here to make more sense. Alright, now if I run this, uh, we can see that the y-axis is working right there. So there are several more functions that for the gamepad, you know, getting the gamepad name, getting how many axes of movement, how many basically uh, I, I believe that these are also considered um, like uh, axis like zero because you can have more than one value for a, a trigger. You can it goes from zero to one, one being fully pressed, stuff like that. But I'll I'll let you guys go and look at that yourself. But um, but yeah, so with these few videos that I've shown, we've basically covered the majority of the most important things in Raylib. Raylib is a very simple library, and of course there's a whole bunch more to do. For instance, 3D rendering, and uh, you know, there, there's a bunch of other functions for generating textures and stuff like that, and we'll cover all those in later videos. But I think in my next episode, I'm going to be covering how to actually make a game. So I think we'll be making a very simple game. If you have an idea of what type of game you want me to make, uh, leave that in the uh, description below. Um, otherwise, I'll probably be making just a simple spaceship shooter where you can move left and right and all that. And we'll be using all the concepts that we learned in the videos. Uh, but yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope it was uh, informative, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.